Somehow I woke up out in Beverly Fucked up, smelling like that bourbon And I had a balloon I'm not start Yeah, the girls seem polite in the club every night That's how it goes when you Hollywood person Well go on people and welcome to the first episode of season number two in the Sunderland Save. We are in the Premier League, obviously not right now, but we are starting things off in this episode. As you would have just seen there, I have made some decisions on transfers as well. We also have Alex Pritchard leaving because he agreed a pre-contract with Bashakshir here. And Daniel Ballard has left to join Club Bruges. We sold him last season. We have put a bunch of players up, like I said. Um, so we will go over to the transfer list quickly and show you them. So only two players actually transfer listed in Carl Winchester and Tagnauti. Carl Winchester just isn't going to play for us, in all honesty. That's the only reason he's been put on there. And Tagnauti, I wasn't overly impressed with so i think we'll let him go and bring in another keeper we have the tough decision because obviously we're playing premier league football of do we let patterson try and play premier league football or do we just bring in a top tier uh goalkeeper as you can see here i have got a shit ton of players on the list right now a bunch of them are being um scouted some of them i'm waiting um i still have a little bit more left to do in terms of scouting for some players that i want to do but the first signing we are going to make this season we are going back in for ahmad diallo he was far too important for us last season to not have him back with the team there were 4% sell-on clause, which I'm happy with. So we will agree a price for Ahmad Diallo. Let's see if we can agree a contract. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. We will offer him that deal. And Ahmad Diallo will be the first signing of the season that we will have joining the club. So it's not too big a signing, but I wanted him back. He was massive for us. I think he ended with like 15, 16. Um assist for us last season so i definitely did want to bring him back in so from that like i said we still got a lot of scouting we still got a lot of decisions to be made so i'm not going to do any more transfers just yet before i finish my scouting um as you can see money wise i obviously gave it away a little bit in that we do have 52 million to work with we've had 63 million overall with ballard leaving um I'm going to send out the youth scouts in a minute just to get that done before I end up spending loads of money. But yeah, we do. We, we're going to pop our objectives up on the screen now as well, and then we'll check out what the board want from us. Objectives starting off with our transfer. We want to add quality depth. And by that, I mean I don't want anyone that I couldn't see breaking into the first 11 at some point in the save. We need to make sure it's quality. We want to sign players familiar with the top five leagues, obviously, so they have experience playing in those leagues, playing at the top level, not a bunch of wonder kid signings, and also utilize the free agent pool to save money so that we can get even more bodies in. Next up is youth, and we're going down a similar path to last year, besides from expanding our program, because our youth program last year was shocking, and he had like two, but we want our top five prospects to start getting some play time wherever they can. Uh, so that's what we're going to aim for. Next is on field. And on field, we're looking to adapt a new counter attacking style um, as well as leaking less goals because we leaked a lot of goals. The last one is a bit of a weird one. I want to give a good account of ourselves in all games. I don't want to get blown out this season. We had a couple of them against Burnley. I want to pack those in. Right, I've done a bunch of scouting and I've gone into free agents, and there are some absolute gems couple you will see here Andrea Bellotti, Mamou Dahou, Jefferson Lerma, Gunter Ferguson, Semedo Manafa. I mean it's almost like we can build our team off of just free agency. I'm not going to do that. 
I am, however, because we are switching formations, going to go in and try and sign um, Zemedo because I think he would be a good signing for us. And then we'll push the sign-on up to six, 550. They're happy to take that deal. So we will sign Nelson Semedo on a free transfer to join as a new left wing back, uh, right wing back, sorry, probably a starting right wing back for us as well. Thinking about it now, Andrea Bellotti probably wouldn't come to us and play a backup role. So we're going to leave that one. There is still a bunch of players that I haven't had scouted yet. I do want to bring in Caramo, but he's going to be a background signing, like not one that I rush him for. I think the next player I would like to go for is probably Mahmoud Dahoud. I think it makes more sense going for Ferguson, so I think that's what we are going to do here. 20, this might be a little bit too low with a 400 sign on. Oh, they're happy with that. Okay, well that works. We will get another signing in here. Nathan Ferguson coming in at that left wing back spot for us. Another big deal for us. He isn't as high rated as I, I would like. We do we have set up a cup slash pre-season team here, which is this team as you can see there. We are working on changing some players' positions still. So there's still a couple things left to do before we get into things. We have a transfer offer coming in from... L show for Jack Clark, which we are going to straight up reject. Um, I am going to continue to train Jack Clark in that right wing back spot because I think that's just that's just where I would like him to play. To be honest, let's take a look at the new signings here. First up, Nathan Ferguson, currently seventy one rated, um, is a right back slash left back. He will be playing that wing back role. We're going to put him on development plan to try and get that pace up a bit however because at the minute he's not the fastest we also have Nelson Semedo coming in at right wing back very very big signing for us uh, we will put him on a can't imagine he's going to grow a lot more at 29 but we'll put him on defensive wing back training that is a big signing for us though that we do we are going to have the problem this whole season that we desperately need bodies in and we don't have a lot of players to sell so it's going to be a bit iffy but we'll try our best i'm going to send out the youth scouts actually quickly transfer offer for right from rangers for dennis serkin um i don't think just because the valuation as well is quite low i don't think we're going to accept that one besides from that we're literally just doing training we're getting a bunch of scout reports back as well so i'll let you know once we've got a deal we do have a tag nauti transfer offer come in here from Nantes. we are gonna try and get a tiny bit more money obviously we brought them in for free 2.6 slightly more so yeah we'll let tag nauti go to Nantes if he's willing to accept that transfer it's nothing personal against tag nauti i just don't think he particularly performed very well yeah do you know what we're gonna go in and see if we can pick up mihailovic here happy to go with 16 so we may have a deal in the offer here for Mihailovic he can play a lot of positions so I think it's probably smarter if we he was one of the players I was very interested in looking at not too expensive wage wise not obscenely high either in the prem oh, but they're not happy with 15 he's only on 8k what's going on here Oh, Nelson Semedo now getting his intro to the club, which is weird because it's quite a fair while after Nelson Semedo actually joined us, but sure. I was planning on playing the 5-3-2, but I think probably the smarter thing to do for us with the players that we have would to be to play with a cam so that we can utilize Richards and then bring in another cam. So we're gonna, with the signing of Semedo, we're gonna have a little bit of a change of plan here. I'm gonna put Diallo on cam training because I think he'll play well in that cam role with the dribbling that he has in between the lines. 
Also, we've done something that's a little bit weird with the main team setup. We want Jack Clark to play that left wing back role, but obviously he's not trained as left wing back at the moment. So what he is going to do is he's going to shuffle a little bit up the pitch where we can put him in as a left winger. So it's a little bit unbalanced, but hopefully it will all work out in the long run. Tagnauti will be leaving us for 2.6 million to Ren. He will be joining them, so it'll be interesting to see how we can do there. Sure, we're about to get the cut scene. Here we go. He wasn't very impressive for us, I'll admit. We got we brought him in on a free, so there wasn't loads of expectation around him, but he kind of just We played him for the first couple of games and he got completely outshone by Patson, to be honest, in the games that Patson did play. So I'm not too upset about letting Tagnauti go. Considering he was literally a free agent signing as well. I think they're probably going to be harsh. Oh no, they actually gave us a good rating for that. Okay, well that's interesting. I thought they were going to be harsh and say like that was a waste. But no, they're actually happy with what we've managed to do. We are at the first game of pre-season here. Uh, we're not, like I said, I, I don't really care too much about pre-season. Like, it's just to get a little bit of fitness in the legs of some of the lads. So we do lose 4-1. To Schalke, Stuart getting himself goal and getting himself booked in pretty much the same sequence. So letting some of the young boys play, put themselves in the shop window. We've got a bunch of scout reports coming back again. So let me quickly look through these and then see if there's any deals to be done. Right, so the player that I have seen on that list, I am very tempted by Caramo still. And then potentially try and train him as a backup striker maybe. But the player I have seen that I am very interested in, Mihailovic, has now joined Girona. So we will be removing him from the transfer list because we won't be going in for him this season. Mamou Dahoud. He's going to ask for a lot of money. I'm hoping this doesn't get me in the trouble with the board. But an 81 rated player on the free agency. I feel like it would be silly of us not to at least try and sign him. 800k. They're happy with that. Don't know how happy our board is going to be about that, though, if I'm honest. We actually haven't checked the board objectives still. I need to go and do that now. So, within two seasons, that's the same one that we had before. So, we're still on course to do that one. So, in two players of a different nationality of the one of the club. We have done that, but I probably won't count. Increase your club's worth by 20% through player sales and competition prize money, which is probably fine. They want us to avoid relegation, reach around the 16 and finish mid-table within two seasons in the Premier League. No continental success. So nothing that should drag us down too badly actually. But yeah, first massive signing coming in on the free agency, Mamou Dahoud joining the team. Obviously he goes straight into the starting lineup. Transfer offer in here for Dan Neil from Elche. Again, it's a difficult one because he his playing time may go down, but I don't think, one, that's a realistic location for him to go. Two, I don't think we want to sell him right now. We do. We are at the next game against um, Girona, though, so we will switch over to the preseason team and Sim. We do actually get a 2-1 win after going 1-0 down. Dan nil. And Ross Stewart wrapping up the result for us. We did get battered in that game, though, to be fair. I just saw the stats. Newcastle United, our rivals, have come in with an offer for Sam McCallum. That is definitely getting rejected. Next game again. Quick sim to see how we do. It's going to be another 2-1 win. Ross Stewart missing a penalty. Dan Neil getting a goal for us, though. Dan Neil stepping up his goal scoring in preseason so far. All right, so a bunch of scouting back in. So I did have an original plan, which I was I was going. My aim was to go for Aaron Wambasaka and swap him to a centre back. But having seen his current valuation, I don't think that's the smartest thing to do for the team overall, because I think that will limit us on making more signings, which we definitely need. So I think instead. I'm tempted by Reese Oxford, but I think the man that I am going to actually go for is either going to be Chris Smalling or Adam Webster. And I think I'm leaning towards Adam, Adam Webster. 
So we're gonna go in and see if we can get a deal done here. We'll go a little bit below valuation. Really? I went one million below valuation and they walk out. Okay, well, clearly they have very strong feelings about the worth of Adam Webster. Maybe we go Reese Oxford. If we try it, Reese Oxford was in the last 12 months of his contract from what I remember. See if we can bring it down to 15.5. Happy with 15.5. Okay, well, that is good for us at least that they're happy with that amount of money. Six foot four is Reese Oxford. Please tell me my game hasn't just crashed. Okay, thank fuck, because I had not saved yet. We are definitely saving immediately after these negotiations, because that's just shit me up. Still pushing for that 36. Alright, let's just be petty. Go for 35. They're happy with 35, so we will sign a new centre back in the form of Reese Oxford. We're going to get Mamu Dahoud first, though, joining the club. This cutscene until literally the next player that you sign. Reese Oxford, in fact, is watching Mamu Dahoud's medical, having not even joined the club officially himself yet. But now Reese Oxford is being. I, I don't know what should happen there, to be honest. That is completely mind blowing to me. But yeah. The problem we're going to have here is we are rapidly going to start running out of money because though we are signing a lot of players, player values are quite high. That's why I'm trying to kind of use the free agents pool as much as I can as well. Uh, Pace-wise, he's looking okay. I think we'll put him on that ball playing defender training just because his passing isn't the greatest I think next up, really, we need a rotational striker. We probably need another midfielder. And we need a goalkeeper for sure. We need a lot, basically. There's a lot that we do need, but priority-wise, we're waiting for a couple of scout reports back on some goalkeepers. Maybe we'll take a look at backup striker real quick. All right, we're going to do something that I don't often go for. Levi Colwell is available for loan so I think I'm gonna see if we can bring him in for a one-year loan deal see how they feel about a 50 50 split they're happy with that so we'll go and talk to see if Colwell will, will join us on loan introduction here for who oh Levi Colwell I'm, I imagine actually didn't actually see the email yet, but Levi Colwell looks like he will be joining us on loan from Chelsea, which is actually quite a big signing for us. Levi Colwell in on loan. We like that a lot. So I think the goalkeeper I'm going to go and try and bring in is Etienne Green, currently at St. Etienne, available for 6.9 million, 6 foot 4. So we're going to go in and see if we can get a deal done here for Etienne Green. They're happy with 6.2, so we will agree a deal in principle for Etienne Green. Can we agree a contract? I brought the bonus all the way down. See, let's just be cheeky and offer 1k less. Okay, you know what, fine. He, does, he can have 22. But yeah, there we go. Etienne Green going to be coming in to compete with Anthony Patterson for that starting goalkeeper role this season. We are doing a bit of a Nottingham Forest, I have to admit, but we kind of have to because our team is nowhere near the standard of uh, the Premier League. So we need bodies in. I'm trying to kind of, like I said in my objectives, keep relatively close to having like experienced players come in that know the league but when there's a couple players like Etienne Green that I've seen that I like the look of then we'll probably just go ahead and jump for them anyway so here's a look at Etienne Green he's pretty well rounded as a goalkeeper to be fair not really many weaknesses we will go in however and put him on that sweeper keeper training actually I've just realized we didn't have Patterson on sweeper keeper training so that solves the whole goalkeeper. Now we have two goalkeepers that I feel okay with. We do, we've got a bunch of centre backs. At least probably isn't of the standard of the league. Serkin's probably questionable as well. I think the thing I want to do here is Vertsen is a player that I like the look of last season. I did talk about trying to bring him in. 
So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Verts. We're gonna try and get Verts in and then train him as a striker. We want Levi Cole. We don't even own Levi Cole, well, guys. So how are we meant to send them to you? Offer 4.5. They want 6% sell on with that. That's fine with me. Vertsen is cheap um, and is young, so I think this is. That's why I feel better about the signing because it still leaves us money to then go in for a central midfielder. What can you expect, really? We're offering 15 with 200k. Oh, fuck's sake! I really need to start putting the. Uh, I think I need to start putting the trans the. The sign-on bonus a bit higher if I'm going for 15k. He's only on 12. That's why I thought he'd be fine with it. I think I'll wait for Vertsen and try again with him. So we'll switch to midfield for now. We can't really afford Kenneth Taylor. Gustavo Hamer we could go for. O'Hare is the one I was tempted to go for. But he's more of a rotational cam. So I think he's probably not the player we want to go for right now. I think Josh Brownhill is the player I want to go for. He was a menace against us last season. Obviously, Burnley did come up with us this season. Yeah, agree a 6.7 deal. I hate offering um, wages, so I hope he just comes out and tells me what wages he wants because I really don't want to have to offer wages. For 42,500, I definitely can't say no. Josh Brownhill will be joining us. Will we actually see Brownhill as the signing? Joining us from also promoted Burnley, Josh Brownhill. I think that is a good signing for us. Not too expensive, not breaking the bank or anything. We don't even have time to say hello to Josh Brownhill. I mean, obviously, we know a lot about him already, considering he batted us last season. I think he scored in both games. Maybe had three or four goals over both games. But yeah, Josh Brownhill will come in from Burnley to help us in that midfield area. We do still need more signings, but like I said, the problem we're going to have is we're now down to only 9 million left in the budget. So we can't bring in like a break in the bank sort of player. But we are slowly but surely adding to the team. Dahoud and Brownhill are big signings. As you can see here, Josh Brownhill coming in. Decent all-rounded player. Can play that cam role for us as well if we need him to. He will be playing in midfield for us, however. Uh, and we're going to put him on box to box, I think. That is where we're going to leave this episode for now because I want to leave some signings for the next episode and then the episode after that. So yeah, that's already... Uh, <laughs> A monumental amount of bodies brought in. How many signs is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight signings in for us already in the first episode. And to be fair, we still need more, but I don't know if we're going to have the money to do so. But yeah, that's going to be where we leave this episode. Please like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell to get notified about when the next episode is available to you. And I hope to see you in it. Peace.